Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. The youngest and the best of Europe here battling it out in a best of three that will make you feel your age. In the top right, we have the French Terran player. Clocking in at top 10, 20 years old, and at approximately 400 APM, it's Clem. Now, very old for a golden retriever, but uh, pretty young for a StarCraft player at 18 years old, or so it is claimed. We have Max Pax. Still, the most mysterious of Protoss M players out there, especially of players who have regular success. Still looking forward to seeing how they accommodate uh, at a LAN tournament. But... This series, these two are, they've toned down a bit. Um, they've toned down a bit. It, it used to be every single game for both of them. Constant aggression, proxy racks, proxy gate. The Max Packs build was like, why would I build a gateway in my base if I could build it next to yours? That was pretty much the entire bit. But uh, they're both full spread players now. They can definitely break out the early game action, but at the same time, pull back and macro it out if needed. Uh, we've seen that time and time again. And they both continue to have that, that regular success. The big stopping block uh, the big stopping block for Clem, uh, much of the time is Korean Terrence um, in land tournaments. Bunny uh, defining example. And uh, the same thing for Max Pax, really. <laughs> like, just Terrans in general. Seem to be his, uh, his biggest weakness overall. Um, but especially the more meticulous ones like Beyond. Reaper on the way. That, yeah, yeah, there's a pylon up there. By the way. Uh, that pylon is in a very suspicious location. Because that, that power field reaches into what, what some might call Clem Space. Uh... That is a DT warp in pylon. Oh, wow. Okay. Or, well, really, whatever you want. Clem playing it safe. He, he walled off with a supply depot early, so that way Max Pax doesn't know what he's up against. He's now building a command center on the high ground, far enough away that the shade won't see it. I don't even think an adept would, would quite see it, even if it walked up the ramp. It's perfectly placed for that. But... I did say they've become more full spread players, but here's what we're going to have. We're going to have Clem doing a Widowmine drop rush while hiding his command center, while Max Pax is pretending like he's not three gating inside the natural. So what I what I've got what I mean is they've gotten better at hiding it. Um, really, as time goes on, uh, as you get older, you start to realize not how to uh, improve your strengths, but how to hide your weaknesses, and that's what growing up is all about. The Adept, Stutter Step, good, but not quite good enough. Oh, wait. He lost track of it for a moment. Uh, but at the same time, the Stalkers were inside the house. Clem, Clem completely blindsided by this. So here we go. There are three Stalkers on the other side of the map. Widow Mind Drop about to hit Reaper into the main. Stalker drawn out of position. Max Pax, he sees this. One mine gonna drop out. Reaper still keeping things busy. There's a tank on the high ground here. And trying to dodge shots, but the Widow Mine ends up dying anyways. Gets out with the medevac. Stalker's driven away by the tank. So the net damage, I think Clem actually a little behind after that. As he does not have his expansion yet. He clearly did not expect Stalkers to be coming from his own ramp. Uh, the tank is is enough to, to keep this at bay, but Max Pax is now up by several workers. Kind of surprised he... Well, the second tank is definitely going to shut this down. Blink is on the way. Uh, I'm sure Clem knows what happened by now. Let's target fire onto the Stalkers. But, Max Pack is still working. He's got enough units to keep the natural under attack here. 
The adept waiting to see if it unsieges. Actually gonna... Ooh, mm, well, tanks might not do their bonus damage against adepts, but they still hit pretty hard. He does get a scout, though. He commits. He sees tech lab barracks uh, upgrading. He sees a starport done. Still a tech lab on that factory as well. So, has a general idea of the trajectory of Clem's build. It really looks like the Stalker should be able to hit that, but it's just barely out of range, as long as the lava doesn't get too active. And every once in a while, we get a call for those lava maps by people who uh, think that maps aren't Terran-favored enough. Um, we've tried it uh, in some of those custom games. Unfortunately, only one race can float their buildings, though. Uh, so that, that does make it difficult for the others. As it should be, right, Terrans? <laughs> Robotics Bay on the way. And here we are. Here we are, by the way. We, we decided to take some jabs. They both probing for weakness. But... Is he going to blink? Wow, he does blink in. But Clem, right out of vision range here. Doesn't quite have enough stalkers, though. The the positioning on the Observer was good. He knows the tanks are there. Max Bear's going to get away with it yet again. Beautifully done. Uh, just... The Max Packs of old would have, would have dove in with those stalkers, started trying to pick off SCVs, and ended up losing half of them. But... He keeps just enough alive, and now he's kept Clem pinned back to his base. The only problem is gonna be the eventual follow-up here. That's four tanks, medivacs, whole lot of marauders. Uh, he's gonna have plus one in combat shields soon. That is the most obvious observer. Does he care? Like, he's gonna be walking by it. The tank out in front. There's no way that Max Pack's gonna kill that in time. Any warp prisms? No, there hasn't been time. Chrono boosting the Colossi out of the robo. Scan snaps up the observer. There's wait, has he not spotted this yet? How does he think the stalkers got? I can't believe this is still happening. I mean, we're fighting in the middle of the map. Did Clem forget that there were stalk? Oh my god, it's still there, by the way. That may become relevant as charge is finishing up soon. If it, it, it's a super pylon, he can warp in charge lots in Clem's natural still. Charge lots are on the way. Extended thermal lance about to complete. I, I mean, you can't really afford to warp in charge lots when you got this tank army. Shield battery overcharged. Keeping the Colossi intact. Wow, three tanks just go down like that. And Clem driven back for now. A third Colossus is going to make it almost impossible to engage this head-on. But if you take your medivacs, pick up your army and boost them across. Did Max Pax not see it? Oh, he warped in the charge lots. Clem's definitely gonna go now, and he was looking the other way. He finds a tank, but where's the rest of the army? Max Pax should know. He's already scrambling back home. He has enough for a recall, but the army's already unloaded. You gotta be careful with those Colossi right now. Clem diving into the main. A lot of the production vulnerable. The Colossi, one knock down, the rest swiping through. Medivax. Dangerous loses one, gets out, drops on top. The Blink Stalker still on cooldown. A couple Marauders get roasted, but overall, Clem, eh, undecided. Okay, how does he think the charge lot's got it? He's still not dealing with the source of the problem. I don't. He, the charge lots are warping it in his main. He still hasn't dealt with that pilot. I can't believe that pilot is still going. This is some Wings of Liberty stuff right here. Like, deal with the pilot. It's still going. Uh, the charge lots are trying to get out, getting body blocked. They're not even attacking. Loses another medevac, though. Oh, they're laying into each other. Max Pack's setting... God, you gotta deal with that pylon. But I can't believe that's still going. It's a, a bit of a disaster for Clem. There's still charge lots in the natural. This army getting outflanked, though. A Colossus could go down. They're adding a lot of damage from the back. Just Marauders surviving. As the Marines are getting roasted away, but Clem taps it I he he left the pile on the whole game. I can't believe it worked. I the the Max Pax gateway. It that was the defining factor. 
so many of his units were tied up dealing with charge lots, he couldn't ever bring it all to bear. And Max Max wins because of it! What are you doing? You gotta... I can't believe it just kept working. I think Max Pax was surprised because he didn't try it for a while. And then he just kept warping in. It's like, well, I, get, I mean, if it ain't broke. <laughs> Blowing my mind with that. And also exciting here. The players being so gracious as to make it confusing by changing colors. At least it's not a mirror matchup. So we got to enforce some... <laughs> Now we have Max Pax in blue and uh, uh, Clem in the red. Uh, well, that was the aggression we're, we're used to seeing. Just. It, from Widow Mine Drop versus Proxy Pylon to everything else versus Proxy Pylon. Clem just laying on the aggression, undercut as we approach the finish line, though. Overall, Colossi are not that dangerous. They're very good at at winning fights they're already winning. Okay, I know, I know that sounds dumb, but what I mean is, is the big strength of Terran is their sustain. The longer the fight goes on, the more the medevacs heal, the more the siege tanks fire, the widow mines cool down, the better it gets. It doesn't get better. Like, it doesn't get better over time for Protoss. And to an extent, the Zerg suffers from this as well. Uh, shields don't come back in combat. So you don't get healed. You you have to be at least not not out of combat, but you don't have you have to not take damage for like five seconds or so, in order for shields to restart. So you want to get as much done with losing as little shields and as little as possible. And Colossi are very good at isolating parts of the army, and and burning them up. But they suffer when the enemy army is able to get a good surround to mitigate the damage, stuff like that. So Max Packs in in dragging half the army away with those charge lots. Essentially uh, sliced up Clem in the bite-sized pieces. And Clem couldn't quite... You could see him arcing out with the marauders, setting up for the fight, but he never quite knocked over the Colossi. And uh, it's a very frustrating place to be as Terran, because you have to split your attention and your units. Um, and attention is probably the most valuable resource at that stage of the game, dealing with the splash damage, so... Max Pack's definitely getting away with a lot on the pylon, but at the right time as well. If he had just kept warping in from the start, Clem definitely would have killed it. He waited until it really hurt to try the pylon again. Uh, and hurt it did. A bit of a more passive start the bridges you're scouting adept scouting reaper separate ways we got robotics facility and a dark shrine well also clem sees the dark yeah. shrine <laughs> not ideal ah uh, yes now for the wait max Pax, where are your units Okay, now for the important question. I'm closing the production tab, guys. This is a viewer challenge. Your Max Packs. Clem scouted your Dark Shrine. Do you cancel it? Do you let it finish? Do you try to use it? You just go for Archon Drop? I predict he tries it, but he also starts a Prism and goes Archon Drop almost immediately. Also, I think this thought experiment is not bad for, for trying to learn from players like, like Clem and Max Pax as well. All right. Well, we'll see. How many gates are we looking at? We got two gates. We'll even try it. He's using the Adepts to scout. He... he 
he has more respect. He has respect, right? He's not going to just try to walk in. He's not going straight for Archons. There's going to be a Raven out. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Raven pops out. Ooh. Gets a couple kills. Scan at the natural. As citizens arrest. Stop right there, criminal scum. And... Archon time. Yeah. Gives it a shot, but... Clem has defused the situation with minimal damage. But Max Pax, just like last game, Max Pax does not overcommit. He pulls back before losing his valuable units. And ends up... Oh. And ends up in an okay position. Because look at the follow-up here. Third base, almost done. Clem is kind of pinned in his base, yet again. Uh, until at least he gets, like, stim combat shield. Doesn't even have a reactor on his starport yet. To build Metavax. So, Max Pack's doing a great job of keeping Clem busy. You can build Metavax without the reactor, it's just you don't want to. Clem agrees. Reactor starts. Meanwhile, Max Pax is continuing to add on. Trying to keep an aggressive defense. He knows uh, if he gets stuck at home, it's going to be hard to deal with the Terran army, so. Just making it very difficult to consider moving out. Blink is not done, but he can juggle. All right. He's going to juggle, but now he's got all these units committed. There's an interference matrix. He could use it on the prism. He wants to use it on the prism here, which would disable dropping and, and loading into the prism, but you can see him threatening, and Max Pack sees it. He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Those aren't high Templar. He can't feedback. All right, we're at 60 probes here. Four more gates charge immediately after blink, plus one on the way. The medevacs are about to complete, though. It's time to go. He salvages the bunker, which uh, brings us to another one of my domesticated peeves, uh, where, so, like, did you need those 75 minerals, Clem? Is that going to make all the difference? Are three charge lots going to come in and ruin your entire day now because you salvaged the bunker? I'm just, I mean... Was it is, it... is it needed? Well, we'll see. Max packs. Actually, pretty light on the army supply. Also, interference matrix can be used on the Archons. We'll see what he decides on. There is a shield battery. There's not that many units. The gateways just came out like, oh, charge isn't done yet. This is a very dangerous army. That's a lot of army supply. Oh, he tried to get a stalker involved there. Charge isn't done. On paper, Clem's army is, is significantly better right now. But, oh, he blinks. He sacrifices four stalkers for the raven. But he does get the full energy raven. And time is on Max Pax's side. Oh no, the prism though! A charge lot wandering up, but the prism goes down, and the last thing tying Clem at home, both his attention and his units, is gone. Now he can focus 100% on Micro at the front. But does he have enough to actually break through? There's a couple Whittle Mines down here. Has Max Pack seen him? I don't think he's seen them yet. Single charge lot over there. Max, Clem has his third. The supply, though. Look at the supply. It is ridiculously inf- He had his production online for quite a while. He's just going. There's no Colossus. But there's also no ghosts. Oh god, that's a lot of medevacs. He's really threatening. This positioning constantly threatens the drop in the main. Like, he's got six medevacs. He could drop all these units in the main. In- in three seconds. But, overall, force fields, eh. There's no real splash damage here, though. Storm is being chronoed as, as Max Pack starts to realize that. The charge lots are kind of stuck behind. Shield battery overcharge is the only thing keeping Clem out right now. Oh, he's, it, Max Pax can't really hit. Like, there's nothing that hits this army. He can't close the distance. 
He needs a store. Uh, it's getting dicey. That prism has three Templar in it. There are ten seconds to storm. That is the most important prism. The force fields are a little questionable here. Just stems into the natural. Widowmind's already set up. Will the storms even matter? He spots the Templar, but... Clem, when given space to maneuver. Oh my. Well, the Archons are finally closing the distance, but he slurps a few more things up. The Widowmind's hit. Kill the Arc... Uh, you can't pin him down. Storm does not kill units like Disruptors or Colossi. There's not even ghosts. Clem just dances away. Well, at some point, he's going to need ghosts. He didn't kill Max Pax. He's just done a lot of damage. Even though Max Pax has a better economy, the units he's building with it are... They're, they're not going to deal with the bio ball very well. He has a few Templar in that prism, but it's mostly Marauders now. That was a big storm, but dances out. The medevacs are starting to run low on energy and to an extent HP. But the Nexus is getting kind of in the way. It's, it's, the supplies are telling the story here. Well, loses a medevac. Without the medevacs, eventually the storms will do their work. There's a ghost in production. And the medevacs are nearly out of energy. So just in time here, another storm. He's trying to zone out, but it feels like you're uh, a light breeze as opposed to a devastating weather event. And another drop over to the right flank. This is that supply lead really manifest. He's, is that even faster? He recalls from the middle of the map. He loses the left side. The prism drops out some Templar. Not enough. Yeah, a bit of a questionable recall. The bio ball comes rolling in, and the momentum is shifted dramatically right now. Uh, Clem still. A few charge left. This is what he needed a while ago. Losing that first prism on the other side of the map was, was very rough, as he didn't have any ability to keep Clem from just focusing entirely on micro. But he did for three seconds, and guess what? Those three seconds obliterate most of his bio ball at the front. Oh my. Any, that's, the charge slots are not for economic damage. They're just for dragging attention away. Oh God, Widowmines also thrive in that situation on the opposite side of the story. Clem looks away for a couple seconds and much of his army. This gives Max Packs a little bit of a window to move out. Another medevac down. There's some bruised Archons there. There are ghosts on the field, though. They don't have enhanced shockwaves, but the radius should be good enough to at least soften things up. Where are those ghosts? Here they are. One, two, three. Archons down and out. Storm's coming in, but the bio army is so strong. He's just stimming. He's winning. There's no more Templar. There's no more army. It's gone. Well, Clem turns it around. And that is a, a pretty, pretty direct demonstration of the struggles of opening with Templar. Um, as when you go storm, you encourage them to build ghosts. And uh, if you have nothing to deal with them, well, it, it, it started out bad and only got worse, so... Game three, Moon Dance. Yeah, I, I, these Terrans are just too good. Uh, there is a single digit number of Terrans. Low single, you got Beyond, Clem, Malru, uh, maybe Bunny on a good day. Um, your units just kind of stop working against them. There are a lot of units as Protoss, especially, you just can't build anymore. Or at least you can't expect to get the sort of success you might on the ladder.
I think Archons and Templar, High Templar, or Dark Templar, but mostly High Templar, are one of those. Um, if you can get the charge lots, maybe. That was the only time the storms landed. But the Colossi might be something worth returning to. We'll see. I'm not locked in here with you, says the probe. Metaphorically, literally I am. But I'm gonna recall recall the probe. Go go recall it. Sticking around. He sees the two gas, by the way. Factory finishing up. Reaper comes out. Do it! Recall! Too late. Once it, once it takes the first hit, you have to do it before the second hit. Otherwise, the Reaper will kill it anyways. But, I guess Reaper confirmed. Sure. Stargate time for Max Pax. Delaying Warp Gate. A depth shade and a cross. And looking... Well, it's not going to find anything there. That's part of why you build the shield battery. Because you're going to send your units across. Uh, the Reaper not going to be able to find anything with the shield battery to protect the mineral line. A depth commits to the shade up. It will spot Base the command center. Attack. I'm pretty sure he already spotted it probably. All right, Clem. Show me that grenade. Oh, it doesn't matter. Not quite quick enough here. Phoenix on the way. I think he he's... he He's right now. It's a Cyclone. He's thinking about Cyclone as well. Phoenix is an okay choice against Widow Mines. You still usually want an Oracle first, but against Cyclones, the Phoenixes are a much more direct counter. And of course, building up that Phoenix count early, build up energy, uh, you have more to respond to whatever's going on. Um, as, getting as many Phoenixes as possible, as early as possible, can pay off, as long as you don't get hit by any Widow Mines. Uh, and it's probably the most consistent way to open up. Uh, it's just quite fragile, uh, especially before you have really a ground army behind it. There's a reason Stargate has been the fallback for, for Protoss players for over half a decade. It's because you get scouting, you get damage, uh, you can complement any army. Only downside is uh, how much it takes to actually keep these units alive and productive. Clem is building up. Is this a one and a half base tank push? He's not building any SCVs. That might be because he's semi supply block. Does he pull the boys with this? I mean, a few at least, but. Wow. Okay, so. Yeah, it's a tactic boys push. He, he does not have a starport. Oh no, the Phoenixes are lifting SCVs, which is all well and good until he realizes why there are no units here. Uh-oh. What's the unit count? There's an Immortal, two Adepts, and a Stalker. Uh, uh-oh. Maxpax was thinking about a third, and he was building a Robo-Bay. Well, he's still building a Robo-Bay, but... Oh, it's not good. Those tanks are hitting hard. Trying to stay in shield bay. Oh no, he flies over. A lot of terrible, terrible. He's just burning through the bay. He doesn't care. Disrespectful. But easily ripping down the immortal. There's nothing left, but he just died. Lem with the perfect choice. He correctly recognized Max Pax would want to tech up. This is the defensive map. This is where you can sit back on three bases. Unless, of course, you get punched in the face too early and you have nothing to defend against it. 
And here, Clem at 22 SCVs, three tanks at the front door, and two games in the bag. He wins the series. Two to one. The biggest weakness of that Stargate opener shown in uh, bold colors there as Clem just punches him directly in the face. <sighs> well, Max Pax trying some new things. I thought some interesting builds, but Clem had his number this time around. Even game one. Um, game one, he pulled off the pylon, but he never could find that success again. I hope you enjoyed I hope you enjoyed this yeah, my Twitch chat and, and so much more as well. Uh, Jimmy, put the... Uh, congratulations, Clem. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Good luck, have fun. See you next time. Stay chill.